Ben and Me, Chapter 10, La Belle, France. Of course, during these stirring times, I came in contact with all the great men of the colonies. The one who impressed me most was naturally General George Washington. Not only was he a magnificent figure of a man and soldier, but the wheat grown at the Mount Vernon was of superb quality. There were always a few grains to be found in his boot tops and pocket flaps. Quite a few crumbs, too, so I always looked forward to seeing him. On one of his visits to Ben, however, he appeared greatly cast down. The situation of our colonies, Dr. Franklin, he said, is becoming desperate. Our brave soldiers lack shoes and uniforms, powder and arms. I fear that we must appeal to some foreign power for aid. But to what country shall we appeal? That seems to be the question. Of course, there's Spain. French pastry? I whispered in Ben's ear. And of course, France, said Ben. There is Russia, suggested General. French wines, I hissed. And France, said Ben. There are Denmark and Sweden, the general said. Beautiful ladies, I whispered. France, said Ben. Undoubtedly France. Very well, said General Washington. France it seems to be, Dr. Franklin. Will you go to the court of France to plead our, ca our cause? It is a heavy responsibility for on your success depends sorry it is a heavy responsibility for on your success depends our whole hope of victory ben rose well we will general we will he said determinedly we i asked the general uh, we asked the general i mean i of course i will replied ben when do we i mean i sail at once said the general rising and looking very noble the armed sloop reprisal is ready to sail with with you, Dr. Franklin, will go the hopes and prayers of a new nation, the ideals, the aspirations, and Amos, I added, but he didn't hear me. So we sailed, and the less said about the trip, the better. I always did despise water, and the Atlantic Ocean contained more ugly, gray, unpleasantly churned up water than I ever dreamed could exist. I was seasick, awfully seasick, and just to make things worse, Ben was not. He was disgustingly well and annoyingly active. He had a new theory for setting sails, which he told the captain would greatly increase our speed. This kept him on deck for several days, to my great relief, but it was suddenly ended by a tremendous outburst of profanity on deck. Ben entered our cabin hastily, followed by angry rumblings from the captain. No vision, Amos, he said sadly. No vision. Blurg, I said. 